give them a lot of good food and light and everything, they don't know how to control it's good food, <laughs> so they just eat it. Okay, now they get all that big, fat, and plump. And what happens is they cannot swim, up and down. <laughs> right? And they're just sitting there, and uh, uh, their predators and fish and everything is just, and fish are visual predators, so they can, like, you know, they can see their prey. And so the moment you grow, like, fat and plump, and you cannot swim down, so you are in the light, you are big, <laughs> and so there is all you. Good food for that fish. Yeah, it's, it, they just don't know how to control. Yeah. It's like, they have issues as well, you know, it's just fine. <laughs> <laughs> I understand as well. But definitely, obesity is a problem. Like, uh, they do grow to the fat, yes. But so is part of what you're saying is that, I mean, can you find resting eggs that are old, that are like decades old? Yes, I just want to talk in yeah. the next section. So are there more questions about what resurrection is or about this section? No? All right. So how far back have you resurrected organisms? How old are they? Okay, this is a proud uh, talk. So before our lab, um, there are two like biggest resurrection studies that happened. And one was in the lake. I just have a picture. It's like not me. Oh, um, I forgot to mention. So this is how the resting eggs look like. So this is what we are looking for in the sediment okay, when we go in. And if you see, there are some minor differences in the structure, right? Like, for example, in the top here, you see they have this sword-like structure. And then there are like some um, surface topology difference. And based on these differences, you can actually say which species they are. So which Daphnia species they are, okay? So the first study that was done, like the complete resurrection study that was done, was in this lake, which is, I am not pronouncing that, but if I do, I want to say on Nantala. Okay, that. <laughs> and, um, which is like uh, close to the city of, um, I guess, Syracuse. Yes, that. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> what they found is, so the history of this lake goes uh, by, again, we are responsible for this. So we opened a soda ash company and all its uh, effluence or sewage or everything was dumped in this lake. And what the lake is disgusting. I went to school in San Diego. It's just really awful. <laughs> exactly. So what happened is basically it just turned into a saline lake. So the salinity increased like crazy. And it peaked around 1980. And what they found, just by looking at the egg, like there was no resurrection involved. They just went in, into the sediments, they collected it, they looked at the eggs at a different layer, and they just found out that when it peaked in the 1980s, they, the entire lake, or the Daphnia in the entire lake, was replaced by another Daphnia, which was super, super salt tolerant. Mm -hmm. But, what happened is around 1985, the government kind of like, took notice and then stopped everything and uh, things happened. And uh, the older Daphnia came back. So there is like no salt tolerant species right now in that, in that lake. It just, it completely overthrew it. So there was not salt tolerant, then all that thing happened <coughs> with the soda ash company, salt tolerant, and then um, not salt tolerant again. So this, this going back in time was only possible if you actually go into the sediment depth of it. So those resting eggs weren't there that whole time for the for us to go and that's their only purpose. I, I I like to believe that that's what they were like sitting there for. So they're and like a record through time. This is a record. It's like traveling back in time but not in a sci-fi fantasy kind of way but actually like going back in time. So I wanted to show you, so the other one, so this is like the birthplace for resurrection. This is in Germany, and um, I'm not going to like go through this, but this is another lake where they found, and this is Lake Constance. And um, again, they looked through the record or the sediments, and they found that with increase in the eutrophication of that super green uh, water, they actually replaced 
or like all your uh, oligarchia were more uh, tolerant of toxicity. So basically, the previous gaphnia was like they just preferred you know normal good algae, but the ones that are growing in the uh, lake right now, they are super tolerant of any toxic algae. It doesn't bother them at all. Like whatever you give them, they are just going to take it. So it's 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 like looking at evolution through that experiment there. So I want to spend just a little bit of time of what we did because you know yeah. crowds know and how do you actually do this? Exactly. How do you actually Okay, so although this picture doesn't show us, we are there. Okay. <laughs> um, this is, <laughs> we are there. We're just like in the bank, um, like in the research station on the bank of the lake, because I don't know swimming, so we were, I was not allowed to come <laughs> So a lot of behind the scenes work that goes into science. <laughs> exactly. Like it's, I, I was trying to look at pictures and I, I asked my PhD advisor, like, where am I? And she was like, well, you don't know swimming, so you were not there. So, <laughs> anyway. so what we do is basically we go into like the deepest section of the lake. And the reason why we go into the deepest is that's the least disturbed area. So we want the area where there is like no disturbance so that we can get the record. And then we lower this glass tube. It's basically like a poster tube. Okay, with like things attached to the end, which I don't think I completely understand, but it does something. <laughs> so we put that like to the sediment and then we put some pressure on it and it goes into the sediment and then we collapse the end and we take it out. So you can see that the sediment is right in here. So when, you know, the, so that's my actually academic grandfather, so that's my advisors, advisors, okay. <laughs> and that's my advisor. So when they brought it back to the lab, that's when we found it. So, you know, so this is like a super high-tech tool that we use for resurrection, okay? <laughs> this is this metal seeds from Walmart. Now we can carry it. So what it does is we just put the, so we first section the sediment. Okay, it's one centimeter, two centimeter, three, four, like this. And then take each sediment and we seed it through that. And that seed is enough to give you uh, something that looks like this. So you, this is all manual labor. There is no tools, nothing involved. You just have to seed the sediments and then look for this. Once you have this, you put them in just a 20 degree Celsius because they like warm uh, weather. So you just put them there, put a lot of light, which we just like prove them that that's sunlight, that's not. But that's okay, <laughs> they, they are good with that. You just put them there and you put constant light. So what, what is happening is we're trying to mimic sun. So there's warm temperature and there's too much sunlight. And that's actually the picture of one hatching out. So this is the resident and they just hatch out. Now the thing is, how do we know how old these are, right? So it depends. So if you look at this picture right here, so suppose we got the resting egg from the super bottom of the egg, right here. So the more deeper we go into the sediment, the more is the age of those organisms, okay? And based on that, I said ready for the proud moment. <laughs> this is the proud moment. Based on that, we were the first lab that was able to isolate this uh, mother, so this is the actual picture, uh, who is supposed to be 600 to 700 years old. So they were present in the lake 700 years back. So what we did is we took her and gave like I don't think I've ever cared about my own self as I did with that. <laughs> you know, I mean, every day I would like go in and like, are you alive? Please tell me you are alive. And then the day you see those eggs in its brute pouch, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> that was awesome. Like, that's, that was the best moment of my whole PhD career. Right. So, so how do you know that they're that old? Like 600 years old? It depends, so we don't actually go in and do any testing on the animal itself. Okay. It depends on the, the depth of the sediments okay. from which we collect it. And one way of doing it is we just do like radiocarbon dating. You know what that is, right? So you take, you measure the amount of carbon or even lead uh, dating. You just
just measure the amount of lead in a present individual and then you measure the uh, amount of lead or carbon in the in that uh, sediment sample and then the difference will give you an, um, a picture of the age of the sediment. So based on that age, this 300 to 700 years old is based on that sediment uh, aging that we do. So when we looked at these organisms and um, they are not different in terms of like their external um, features. So if you take a look, this was the first picture of Daphnia that came out in 1669 when like they actually drew by hand, like publication was like drawn by hand. And then this is what, well, we, we think they are uh, 600 to 700 years old. The small sign here says that it's an estimate, right? Because we cannot for sure say that it's exactly 700 years old. But the good thing is um, we got um, one of the, I mean, the reason why she is so precious is because the hatching success decreases with the depth of the sediment. And that makes sense, right? The older the egg, they are probably going to decay. So we were only able to resurrect two eggs from that sediment depth, just two. Whereas we were able to resurrect 48 eggs from, say, that were 20 years old. And that makes sense. I mean, you know, there are so many, this has been there buried in the sediment for so long. Like, you don't know. Yes. I mean, how many, you, you were able to resurrect two from the 700 year old sediment. How yeah. many eggs did you actually find? Um, we found. We found quite a bit, actually, because we also, so these are just the resurrected ones, but if you find it, you can actually extract DNA and run a lot of this, and we did a lot of this. And if I remember correctly, I think we got a total of um, somewhere around 500. So two out of 500. Yes. Two out of 500. Those are pretty low up. Yes, <laughs> exactly. I mean, so, okay, the ratio is probably okay in the sense that on the top sediments, so the sediments which are like super young, I think we got more than like 15 to 2,000 like eggs, um, out of which we could only resurrect 48. But we, the thing that we have to keep in mind is we are going in and messing with the natural system. So the rate will obviously be, you know, sometimes the fact that we are mimicking summer doesn't work. So what we go and do there is we go in and those, you know, those outside layers that they have, we go in and just make a small slit in the in the layer, and that helps them to like, you know, get out of um, that external surface. But that is something that we are doing, right, for our, our you know, our best. Uh, to get a hypothesis, but um, most of them, like most of the uh, animals that were present on the top surface, or those who, who were younger, um, the light and mimicking the summer was enough for them to um, 